Welcome back to Know Your Moves. What's a Know Your Moves? See that move? Now you know! Except today, we're not going to be talking about Metroid. Remove the D, the T, move this around, uh, squash this. I was trying to spell Steve. But first, these videos are only possible thanks to today's sponsor, Keeps. Has this ever happened to you? Keeps is a subscription service that focuses on making it easier and more affordable for men to treat their male pattern baldness online. For me, it's a... Uh, <laughs> No secret that I've had my run-in with hair loss over my 20s and whew, you have your mom handing you bottles of oil you can't pronounce and you're told to eat a dump truck load of nuts. You honestly don't know where to turn in situations like that, which is why Keeps is a fantastic option. With Keeps, you can get A, treated from home, and B, have a licensed doctor help you choose the correct treatment plan for you. Plus, you'll always have access to this doctor to ask questions and to clarify what you exactly need. The program itself takes four to six months to take effect. So, essentially, the sooner you start using Keeps, the sooner you'll start saving hair. If you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com slash relax or click the link in the description to receive 50% off your first order. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash relax. <laughs> Um, hi, this is happening, and, uh, <laughs> it's been a while. We have a whole Min Min now. Ike, what have they been feeding you? Mario, what can you say about him? A worker's paradise! Who, like, rushes their controller on the character select screen just so they can lock in Mario? He's the undercover cop pick in the spin-off game. You don't see anybody picking Mario when you have an option infinitely better. Luigi. Yahoo! He's been Nintendo's mascot character since... That's fucked up. Like, like, look how the industry has changed. The new console manufacturers, the new genres, the new types of people playing games. There are more people out here playing games. And Mario still ranks out among some of the best-selling gaming titles. How did this do better than Titanfall 2? Like, even Mickey Mouse isn't prevalent as much as Mario is now. But you know what they both have in common? Why do they get to get slammed by Sephiroth? It's the Mickey Mouse Clubhouse! Don't be intimidated, Squidward. Try to imagine him in his underwear. Oh no, he's hot! Anyways, Mario. He is the de facto Super Smash brother. I mean, do you think these are the brothers? The gameplay is based on him and his own platforming hijinks, so you'd expect that he'd have some of the most unique and interesting move origins to Oh. Like many of the old characters and unlike the newer ones, what the fuck? See, the first Smash Bros I can excuse. If I or anyone has anything analogous to the first Smash game, please don't hold it against them. Please. Like at this point, it was as much a Mario game as any of these other spin-off ones. And yeah, I know it isn't, but it had many of the same characters that many people recognize from Mario Party and Mario Kart. Where's that finger been, Luigi? But you know, that was the point of Mario. You could throw him in anything, change his personality or how he's portrayed, and it would still work because it's Mario. Or it's because he's an empty husk of a character. This guy gives me the creeps. Even getting close to him makes my skin crawl. <laughs> For me, in my history of playing video games, Mario was inconsistent everywhere. Like, I first played him in Melee, then I played Luigi's Mansion. Then I played like Super Mario Bros. 1. Was I supposed to have any sort of consistency between what this franchise wanted? No. Okay, see, this? This isn't gonna happen. Anyways, when Smash Bros. 64 came out in 99, the characters weren't about accurately portraying how they appeared in their games, it was more about just the novelty of these characters being in a game at all. This isn't about representing Nintendo's vast history yet. In 98, there was only like 15-ish years of Nintendo even becoming a household name. And this was the future forecast. So, namesake of the video, Mario in Smash 64. He was a bit rough around the edges, but over the years, to most of our recent iterations, he's improved in... <laughs> like, three ways. He literally has been the exact same. The guy with the most source material still has a bunch of non-reference punches and kicks and amalgamations of moves from different games. This is where I make a long point. 
during the development of Smash 64, Mario just made the jump to 3D. He had a revolutionized new look and it was spearheading a new era of Mario. Look at him, he's so pudgy! All Marios we know in every Smash game are based on the Smash 64 moveset, so we're gonna basically look at that first. And if you wanted to compare as if Mario was added to Smash Bros. today, the game that they based his moveset off of the most is Super Mario 64. I know we all know Mario's voice now, but when Smash 64 came out, it was still only a few years old. His menu portrait is taken straight from Mario 64 and, of course, the model. If we take a look at both of them side by side, you can see that they... Hey! Hey! What are you doing? Come on! What you... We don't have time for you to mess around! Get over here! <sighs> Italians. Uh, the two models, they're actually very similar except for the posing, but the Smash 64 model kind of looks like that low poly model they use for Mario when he's far away in the draw distance in Mario 64. <laughs> Everyone knows their angles, Mario, no yours. Anyways, what the hell is this game, right? Like, this is just a toddler's game. Stupid, like, you jump a little, collect some stars, like, baby food. You know what this game can't do? Deodorize. Basically Super Mario 64 sort of maybe entirely defined 3D movement in um 3D games which last time I checked is pretty much most of them now. This game cemented my belief that Mario was a reprehensible human being. Seriously look at that walking animation. Who the hell shit in your coffee? We're ha we have a show to run. As for the references, it sort of feels like how they're making characters now, where they apply references in the appropriate areas. For example, <laughs> this is taken like right from Super Mario 64. I mean, it's the perfect thing for him. <laughs> are you who are you laughing at? Mario 64 influence goes right down to the most basic of attacks, the neutral jab. He does the one-two kick that he had in Super Mario 64. And it doesn't stop there. The breakdance move that was completely useless in Mario 64 is actually a pretty useful down smash. I have my suspicions that this was also the inspiration for the down tilt in. I also like freeform jazz. Anyways, unlike the useless breakdance move, the slide kick is A, referenced in the dash attack, and 2, actually utilized in speedrunning. Am I the only one that like never used this in the actual game? The Bye. Bye. Rest in f***ing pizza. Anyways, the back throw, it's fine, but since we're talking about it, I kind of am wondering why they didn't use the same voice line here. Smash 64 and Melee Mario, all of their voice lines are like slightly pitched down versions of the Mario 64 voice. Very weird. But the throw... What, what, what is this? I don't get it. What, what is that voice? Where is that even from? A lot of people believe his neutral aerial is based on his air kick, but you know, a part of me thinks the way he kicks is more akin to his up aerial. So basically, I'm dumb. I bet you were relieved that King Babam is nowhere near Smash. You're welcome. And besides attacks, there's a ton of non attack animations they've taken, like. The crouch? And taking the camera under, you can see that Mario's eyes are actually open during the crouch, and boy does he look lifeless. Definitely reliving the regret of doing that beatboxing commercial. And his sleep, which again, a huge missed opportunity. Ha, <laughs> ravioli. A wall jump that he got in melee. Do you need a little pick-me-up? <laughs> oh, that's good. But it's not just for my sick thrills. His shield break and tripping animation? They're actually taken from one of his death animations. I know, it's pretty unfortunate that Mario actually dies in some of his moves, but I have some good news. He dies in two. And his jump, which is an obvious reference to his walk. This has been his staple pose since the first game, so obviously it's a big part of the moveset. I'd go as far as to say that it even probably inspired his up special, and a lot of the moves where he's actually hitting a block above him. I know what you're saying, you're like, okay, how does this move relate to his original jump sprite? It's, it's only the coins. Well actually, it has the most in common with this original jump sprite. And when you do hit an enemy, it's the same as Mario hitting those multiple coin blocks. Effectively, hitting all of the coins out of his enemy until they can't be hit no more. A lot of people seem to think the fist enlarging from many of his moves comes from Super Mario RPG. It does match up, actually, to how Mario has his fist attacks in that game. But I think it also is just a testament to the fact that this guy breaks brick blocks with his fucking bare hands. The first jump isn't the only reference, as if you do a backflip, it's actually referenced by Mario's backflip from Mario 64. But do you love Emmy Award winning game Super Mario Odyssey? There. That. That's it. That is it. This is like your friend showing up late to your birthday and then leaving 30 minutes later. So the up special 
sometimes puts Cappy on your hat and gives you some purple New Donk City coins to collect. Mario officially dies more than there are references to Mario Odyssey. Wait, what's that? There's a reference to Mario Odyssey somewhere else? <gasps> Where? <laughs> How could I have missed it? Other than the Super Mario 64 stuff, there exists two other root references that are in Mario's moveset. You'll never guess what they reference. Yeah, the series icon, I just could not imagine it being anything else, unless they did all of the icons for each of the characters, but for the entire series, it makes the most sense. I mean, the mushroom is a wonder drug in the Mushroom Kingdom. It makes you grow, go fast, have an additional dice block, and gets you kicked out of a casino. But as for appearing in the moveset... What is this? What does this even imply? Who added this to every Smash game because they thought it was the coolest taunt ever? Like, am I supposed to be shocked? Scared? Impressed? We traded one evil for another. Instead of this, now we have Mario in a Sonic pose. <coughs> then the Fire Flower. I think while it doesn't make sense, it pretty much is the most logical choice for his base special. If you've played a Mario game, you know that B button shoots a Fire Flower. And in Smash, it functions pretty similarly, though the Fireball moves way slower. I guess this could have been the inspiration for the forward smash as well. In Melee Onward, they added this, like, fire blast, which, yeah, it looks pretty cool. I just don't understand where it's from. And in the most extreme version, we have Mario's final smash, Mario Finale. Somehow, I thought all the final smashes would be as epic as this one, and then... It's time for... Move over! The Mario Tornado. It's been in every Smash Bros game. Sort of. First it was a down special, then in Brawl it changed to a down aerial. That's fine, right? Right? It's cool. It's just- it's just a- it's just a move. I have a little bit of beef with this aerial slash down special. Ever since I've known that moves could be known, everyone, and I mean everyone, has said, this has been the spin jump from Super Mario World, but guess what? I was raised on Super Mario World. We was eating pea balloons for breakfast. What part of this move looks anything similar to the spin jump? It has more in common with the spinning animation from Mario 64 when you're in a tornado or on a spin drift. And the down air that they ended up replacing this with, that looks more like the spin jump. But why did this move move over? I have some good news for water purists out there. Yeah, that's water! It is a faithful rendition to how this water appeared in Sunshine. Using this on your enemy functions like you're spritzing your cat with water. Sure, this is how it worked. Water in Super Mario Sunshine was mainly used to clean things up, but also for physics-based puzzles. So, in Smash, it's actually extremely faithful. In Smash Bros, you can actually charge it up, which is a reference to how you have to fill it with water before using it. But you can also angle it like in Sunshine. What I'm getting at is they put in a lot of effort to Frankenstein this move into Mario's moveset. But in Smash Bros in general, Flood and Squirtle's Water Gun are like the only two moves that are chargeable water moves. Any other moves with water physics are basically bonus effects to the move. This is what our taxes are going to. These water moves suck! Why are they still here? I feel like Flood was only added because they arbitrarily had to add something from Mario's newest game. It's ridiculous. It's stupid. I don't understand why they wouldn't- And this has been Move Over. His moveset got watered down. There's one more move we have to talk about. It looks like a craft single. The cape was added as Mario's side special in Melee. And since then, it's gotten a pretty nice update. Good, right? Why is one of my favorite games treated like shit? In Smash, the cape has reflective properties. You shoot a projectile at it, it bounces right back. If you're fancy, the cape can also be used to help you recover. But I know what you're saying, they're like, yeah, th this was what it was doing in Mario World. No! I had to check, I had to be sure, and you don't reflect them. You just obliterate projectiles. To be sure, you may make a case that in Mario World, you can float with the cape to make platforming easier, but let's review. It actually lets Mario fly. You can float down with it. It can insta-kill enemies and destroys projectiles. It does not reflect projectiles or air stall. Even as a kid, I didn't even recognize this as the cape from one of the first games I played. I just thought it was some dumb bullshit Mario stuff, and guess what? It was. So as you can see, <laughs> wow.
I think nearly every other veteran has gotten <gasps> I like her. some changes to them that aren't cappy for a few seconds. Link reflects Breath of the Wild Link for Pete Sake, but Mario, he just has this ambiguously referenced cookie cutter moveset. And what's interesting is they could have changed him. Nearly all of his animations have been redone, and yeah, swirl my wine in a glass, that's exquisite. But would I say superlative? Not with prudence. But maybe to see why Mario is so... Shit! Maybe let's work backwards here, because to ask why a character's designed the way they are in Smash, we should see how they were made for their games. And as I mentioned earlier, Mario is the product of whatever the game calls of him. He's made to be flexible and cater to whatever the gameplay of the game he's in wants. And that's why in most games with multiple characters, he's used as the baseline. He has the most basic stats, whether it's karting, golfing, or... Seven Cooper Hotels! Shut up! Mario, being so well-rounded, is universal to his design. It's actually pretty cool. So, I love visual design and semiotics. I see a thing, and I go, why is it blue? But... Mario and his design, his aesthetic, lines up and matches with how his gameplay goes. Here, these aren't corporate logos, don't worry. These are the building blocks of some of your favorite characters. See right here how these shapes can denote strength and confidence, while circles communicate cuteness and simplicity. If you were to extrapolate, this follows to these characters' games and who they're marketed for, but mostly how they play. Even with the Mario Brothers, and they are some of the most simple designs in gaming, it's very evident. Just basing from Mario to many of the other ones, Luigi. He's off kilter, he lacks confidence. I don't mean to say this to insult you, but... You're oval as fuck, dude. Wario, he's tough, thick. And that jawline, whew, Waluigi. Pointy. Weird. He's bending in ways we should have never seen him bend. I will not attempt this on Pyra, however. But, uh, <laughs> circling back, Mario is round. By definition, he's basic, balanced. His nose, his head, he's based on circles. And if you wanted to extrapolate, he's meant to be predictable and adaptable. So what does this have to do with Smash Brothers? <laughs> Everything. Early on, I said Smash Bros. was made off of Mario's platforming hijinks. The game is called Super Smash Brothers, and most of its fundamental design, maybe a third of it that isn't the fighting game portion, is based off of platforming, which Mario is sort of the godfather of. And on the roster, the characters, don't they all share the same DNA with Mario? Hey, you die! Mario is sort of the baseline for what characters are like, right? Recoveries that do this usually have a double jump. Neutral attacks are usually three hit combos. Smash attacks go in directions you input. Special moves are projectiles and down specials are usually compost. He's got a bit of everything and his stats are incredibly average. And that's entirely perfect. So, why hasn't Mario changed after all these years? Because I believe Smash 64 Mario has the genetic makeup of what Smash Brothers is. That's a scary thought. And Smash 64 Mario is most of what Mario is in Smash. He's kept here to sort of anchor the game to its origins. And to make an even larger, more elegant point, as Mario is the root for all the characters in Super Smash Brothers, isn't that sort of a testament to the fact that he's sort of the common ancestor to all of these characters? As he sort of made gaming what it is today. Perhaps without the success of Donkey Kong and Super Mario Bros, some of these characters may have never existed. Or, you know, maybe there would have been like an alternate universe where Yoshi was blue. Do I really want to think about that universe though? I don't know. So that's the show. And now you know your moves. Wait a minute. <laughs> I think I smell a medical degree. <laughs> That's right, even Mario's an essential worker. Who knew this game would prepare me for real life? So, the basic difference with Dr. Mario and Mario is Dr. Mario spent 10 years in medical school, thus delaying him from joining Smash Brothers again. Dr. Mario has a few changes that reference the Dr. Mario line of games. Yes, there's a Dr. Mario line of games. Yes, it has the same amount of entries as F-Zero. So, any other questions? Does the F stand for fast? And as far as movesets go, 
Pills are basically his thing. You never want pills to be your thing. In the Dr. Mario puzzle game, you move around pills in order to kill viruses. I don't think the CDC would agree, Mario. The two sound effects you hear in Dr. Mario's moveset relate almost exactly to the original game and how they appeared. When you throw a pill, it's the sound you get when you clear a row. And when you kill a virus, that's when the pill hits somebody. And it's also in his final smash, I'm not gonna pretend to care. One of the biggest references to his game is actually the entrance animation. You'll notice that it's a screen of the Dr. Mario game. And the way the pills are set up, when the first one drops, it sets off this chain reaction and clears the entire screen. With Dr. Mario being there, unimpressed. Like even his render, does he have bad news? Good news? I wouldn't make him my family doctor. And then the rest I basically have cemented my own headcanon towards. Such as his forward smash having electrical properties to reference there. And his cape, which got a much needed change from Mario, so at least they look different. And technically, it's not really a cape anymore. It's a, a sh what is it called? Ah, his super sheet. While it references nothing from anything, my theory is it references those little paper sheets they put on the medical beds in the doctor's office. In its trophy description, it says it's longer and thinner than Mario's cape, and that's all the evidence I need. Dr. Mario hits harder than Mario because obviously he understands dietary science. They changed his down aerial to signify the strength of macronutrients gained from eating fruits and vegetables. Which means his down special returns to its pre-flood original form. And, I mean, this doesn't seem to reference anything, but do you have a PhD in virology? I didn't think so. With all that knowledge, Dr. Mario knows how to hit his attacks harder than Mario. But that also means he's a bit slower. And a bit heavier. Meaning he can't recover like Mario does. This is a reference to his crippling medical debt from post-secondary education. Hey, Dr. Mario, what school did you go to? Oh, what's the matter, you? Woohoo! <laughs> Socialism! Wait, I feel like we're forgetting someone. Yahoo!